I came up with one tip for every single crafting recipe. That's right, all of them. If some recipes are extremely similar, like the fences, I'll probably lump them together, but if I can find a case for them, I will. Let's get started. First for fences, probably the most classic tip that's in Stardew Valley. You can place grass starter and then place a fence on top of it so that it spreads but cannot be eaten by animals. For grass starter specifically, you can place it down on the very last day of winter and it'll spread like crazy getting you started for the new year. Not only can gates be placed on their own, but you can place them on top of different types of fences to make a gate that better matches the fence. If you find yourself stuck behind chests and they're filled with items that you don't have enough room to unload, you can mash an empty hand against them to move them one space at a time. You can also just use this to rearrange your chests if you want. You can place torches behind bushes to make essentially invisible lighting. They can also be placed on top of walls and fences. So you know how you're allowed to plant 15 crops before there's a risk of scarecrows? Planting a 16th crop does start the risk of scarecrows, but only for that 16th crop. Whatever first 15 crops were planted won't be attacked. So if you have split crop fields, you don't need to cover whatever crops were first. Just cover what's after 15. The deluxe scarecrow has twice the radius of a regular scarecrow, but that doesn't mean it covers twice as much space. It's actually close to 3.5 times the space. The radius of a circle is pi times radius squared, and that squared is what makes the change not linear. Bee houses don't produce during winter. If you leave a bee house alone all winter, it'll produce honey on spring 5th. This is super specific, but if you pick up and replace a bee house on the very last day of winter, it'll produce honey one day earlier on spring 4th instead. I do not know why. In terms of profit per day, the preserve jar actually beats out the keg for every single crop except wheat and hops. This is mostly due to the short production time when compared to other fruits or vegetables in a keg. You can use an upgraded hoe to empty many casks at once instead of smacking them one by one. Furnaces still work on the top floor of the mines, so place them there to make bars while you delve deeper, returning up at every checkpoint to replace the ore. While garden pots normally can't be used on areas outside of the farm, they can grow tea saplings anywhere. You can use signs to display how many and what kind of fish are in a fish pond. Yes, this is a commonly known trick, but they're signs. Also, placing an item on the sign doesn't use up the item, unlike some other games, so you can proudly display your rare item without using it up. Despite selling for a lot more, goat cheese restores the same amount of health and energy as regular cheese. So if you have to choose between one, sell your goat cheese and use regular cheese for food. When turning eggs into mayo, there's only one egg that will retain the quality it had as an egg, and that's the ostrich egg. There's also one egg that will actually lose value if turned into mayonnaise, an iridium golden egg. If you don't have the artisan profession, it outsells the three gold quality mayo it makes by 145 gold, and even more if you have the rancher profession. So stay with me for this one. Sunflowers famously make very little money, but there's a weird quality that only sunflower seeds have. Seeds that you harvest from your farm or get from a seed maker or from Pierre only sell for 20 gold. But seeds that were bought from Jojamart can be resold to Pierre for a hundred gold. There's a quirk to this where if any sunflower seeds are added to an existing stack of seeds in your inventory, they take the properties of that original stack. On average, you'll get about two seeds from whatever crop you put into a seed maker. Meaning if you stack those sunflower seeds onto a Joja sunflower seed, you're making 200 gold. Add that to the seeds that you'll get when you're harvesting sunflowers anyway, and that's actually not that bad of a moneymaker. You can put yellow couches from a furniture catalog into a loom to make cloth. Similar to the green wallpaper in the prismatic shard, the yellow couch shares an ID number with wool. The regular oil that you get from an oil maker from either putting in corn or sunflower seeds does not get a buff from the artisan profession, despite truffle oil getting the buff. Here's some reasons to not put items into a recycling machine. 
Driftwood is actually a liked item for Leah. Broken glasses count as a blue dye item when it comes to tailoring. And any piece of trash can be tailored into a clothing item that shows your true colors. In terms of solid money per crop, fruits will earn more in a keg than a preserves jar if they sell for at least 50 gold, and vegetables will sell for more if they're at least 200 gold. Tappers can be used on mushroom trees, but they'll always give you common mushrooms unless it's the tenth of the season, in which case they'll give you whatever special mushroom you haven't gotten last. If it's fall, after getting a purple or red mushroom, it will continue to give you red mushrooms. Otherwise, it'll go back to common mushrooms. Yes, lightning rods make you batteries, but they actually have a second purpose. Lightning strikes can take out your crops, your sprinklers, or whatever else you have. And the more lightning rods you have, the more of a chance they have to intercept those lightning strikes that would otherwise hit your stuff. Slime egg incubators are affected by the coop master profession, changing the two and a half days it normally takes to hatch a slime egg into just about a day and seven hours. In terms of average money made per day from a single machine, slime egg incubators have the most at about 1,500 gold per day. So if you have slime, use it. Always make sure to break your crystallarium first to get the gem out before changing gems. Otherwise, you won't get it back. You, that's right, you could be the first person ever to use a mini jukebox. All you'll have to do is craft it and use it. The basic sprinkler is often overlooked, but you're stuck with only it for four entire farming levels. Here's a good layout for using them. All of the spots that you see hoed are spots that will get watered. Sprinklers can be used to automatically fill your slime hutch trough. You don't get any slime balls unless the trough is filled, so this is important. Iridium sprinklers with pressure nozzles can reach every single space in the greenhouse while only taking up one spot of tillable soil. A common misconception has led a lot of people to think that fertilizer only works on the first harvest of multi-harvest crops. That's not true. It works on every harvest, but it only works on one crop if the harvest gives more than one crop, like blueberries or cranberries. Crops like corn will always benefit from fertilizer. It can be difficult to tell if making quality fertilizer would be cheaper than just buying it in the shop due to the requirement of any fish. A good way to make sure it's cheaper is by using fish from a freshwater crab pot. There it'll always be cheaper to craft. You should never use deluxe fertilizer on your farm unless you plan on carrying it over through seasons on multi-season crops. Due to five deluxe fertilizer essentially costing 1,580 gold to make, you're not likely to make that much of a profit in a single season over something like the two gold cost of the regular fertilizer. Retaining the soil is often overlooked because it doesn't outright give you a better profit, but it does have one very useful use case being used on indoor potted plants. Since sprinklers can't affect potted plants, this is the only way to keep them watered overnight. If you get the 20 free speed grow from the spring crops bundle exactly on spring 13th, which can only be accomplished by planting a cauliflower on day one, you can use it on any strawberries you get from the egg hunt to squeeze an extra harvest out before the end of spring. Deluxe speed grow is sold on year two by Pierre for a whopping 150 gold. But at the Oasis, it's always sold, even on year one, for only 80 gold. Here's a tip for speed grow in general. It's always going to be better than fertilizer if you plan on processing your crops. Because if you process them, the quality of the crop does not matter. The wine or jelly or whatever will always come out at normal quality. Trees won't grow at all during winter unless you put tree fertilizer on them. For some reason, this is also the case in the desert, even though it's not affected by the seasons at all. Staircases can be a great source of stone in the late game. On Sundays, you can trade one jade for a staircase at the Desert Trader, and then deconstruct them for 99 stone each. So this one's going to be myth busting. In a couple of my challenge videos, I was told that you can do the mermaid puzzle with just one flute block. You can't. I have tried, and there is no way to do that. I have placed these drum blocks in a specific way to make a sick beat. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? All bombs deal an equivalent of two regular pickaxe hits to trees, and if you knock down a tree like this, you won't get any experience. Five quartz can be traded for a bomb at the Desert Trader, and a crystallarium makes about two quartz a day. 
The range of a Mega Bomb is not a perfect circle. It covers a bunch of extra tiles to its bottom left and has a bit of a chunky shape in other areas. The other bombs are all symmetrical circles. My tip for explosive ammo is to use it. It's worth getting used to the slingshot for and it makes the Skull Cavern run so much quicker. Monetarily, there are no situations where turning three copper bars into one iron bar is worth it. However, if you change two iron bars into one gold bar, you can sell that for 10 more gold. So this next one isn't about a crafting recipe, but it's the transmute that the government doesn't want you to know about. First, make sure that you don't have the trapper profession. So now you have the iron bar version of the crab pot recipe. If you craft them and then put them into a deconstructor, they will always give you the two copper bars from the cheaper recipe. So that's a way to turn three iron into two copper. When you first start growing ancient fruit, put the fruits you get into a seed maker. Ancient fruit seeds are rare, and this is one of the most profitable crops in the entire game, so it's worth doing as early as possible. All of the seasonal forageable seeds crafted recipes will sell for more than the sum of their parts, except for the winter seeds. However, I still recommend crafting these because then you can use them on all of those empty fields you have in winter. Usually after every season, all fertilizer will disappear unless you have a crop that grows on both seasons that carries over. Fiber seeds are the only crop that grows in every single season, so you can use this to carry over your fertilizer whenever you want. This is pretty common knowledge at this point, but the tea saplings that you unlock for getting two hearts with Carolyn sell for a crazy amount of money. This is one of the best early game money makers. Once you unlock the casino, it's worth playing the slot machines for a while on a really good luck day with some luck buffs to build up a good stack of casino coins. This way you can buy a ton of farm warp totems. It's the poor man's return scepter. Mountain warp totems are the only ones that can be dug up. Only after summer first of year one, though, for some reason. Using a beach warp totem on the day of the luau or moonlight jellies before the event starts will cause the totem to be used up, but it won't warp you. Using the desert warp totem on days that you want to do skull cavern runs is super important because it can get you to the desert three hours earlier than the bus can. Gifting an island warp totem to Kent prompts him to say, they gave me to this in Gatoro prison camp meaning they really just wanted him to go on a nice vacation. Normally, a rain totem will never create a thunderstorm, but if you use it on the day of a thunderstorm, the next day will always be stormy instead of just rainy. Cookout kits used to be one of the most broken money makers in the game, being sold for 3,000 gold just for some wood, fiber, and coal. Seems like that was a mistake because it got knocked all the way down to 80 gold, which is less than those ingredients sell for. It's now probably one of the most useless items in the game. Field snacks are one of the very few food items that are craftable wherever you are. And my tip would just be, don't just automatically make as many as you can. It may be tempting because you figure, oh, pine cones, maple seeds, and acorns aren't that useful, but you never know when you're going to need a tree farm. Jack-o-lanterns are the smallest light source in the game, which can be useful if you're going for some very specific lighting setups. On your farm only, all pathing will make you one unit of speed faster, which isn't a lot, but it adds up over time. Bait is probably the easiest dye item in the game, since it works as red. Not only does wild bait give you a chance for double fish, but it also speeds up getting a bite more than regular bait does. Despite the description for magnets saying fish don't like the taste, magnets have the same bite rate as regular bait. Also, buying magnets from Woolies is super expensive. You're better off just outright buying the iron ore and coal from the blacksmith even on year two with the increased prices. Tackle always gives the same amount of resources back when deconstructed regardless of its durability. So you can craft a spinner, use it up almost all the way to empty, deconstruct it, and get all of the crafting materials back. And then of course, craft another one. The Trap Bobber is yet another profitable crafting recipe selling for 120 gold more than the copper bar and sap used to make it. The fishing bar size increase from the Cork Bobber is equivalent to gaining three extra fishing levels. 
And this recipe is also profitable, earning 105 gold more than the ingredients. Most people consider the regular spinner better than the dress spinner due to it not being that much of an upgrade. And the dress spinner is better just outright sold since it earns a whopping 500 gold. I did the math, and fans of the Treasure Hunter Bobber will not be pleased. Most people consider Magnet Bay extremely overpriced, and the Treasure Hunter is fine because it has a good effect. Using Magnet Bay, you are losing 4 gold per 1% chance of getting a treasure chest. With the Treasure Hunter, you get 20 uses per bobber, but with only a 5% increase in chance. So you pay 7.5 gold per 1% increase. Even though magnets may seem expensive, turns out they're more gold efficient when crafted than the Treasure Hunter bobber. With a large enough fishing bar, the barbed hook essentially gives you a guaranteed catch for many easy fish without you even having to do anything. It's an expensive recipe, but this is the vanilla version of skipping the fishing minigame that all of you have been wanting. The description of the oil of garlic is pretty vague and leaves a lot of people wondering what exactly it does. When you have the oil of garlic buff, it prevents the possibility of getting any infested floors and prevents all enemies period in the mines. It also doesn't count as a food or a drink buff, meaning it can be used alongside both of them. The tooltip for the life elixir is lying to you. Even though it says it only heals 90 HP, you'll see that I'm missing about 170 HP. It's a full heal no matter what. Also, if you're making it for energy refill instead of health, surprisingly, eating the purple mushroom Morel and Chanterelle individually gives you more energy than drinking the life elixir itself. So not worth it. On average, crab pots in the ocean earn more than they do in fresh water, and the water on the beach farm is considered an ocean. Also, while other types of bait can be put into the crab pots, they don't do anything. So only use regular bait. Not really much to say about the Iridium Band other than it's well known to be the best ring in the game and is always worth working towards. And it can be used as purple dye. Even though the wedding ring is only in multiplayer games, it's still required to be crafted in order to achieve perfection on a multiplayer account, essentially increasing the price of perfection by 10,500 gold. The Ring of Yoba has a 1% chance to activate at 90 HP, increasing linearly to 30% chance at 1 HP, with a 20% boost at 15 HP, adding up to a 50% chance max at 1 HP. Luck buffs increase this chance, but only by about 1.3% for each point of luck. I had full luck in that situation, and it did not activate once. So as you may or may not know, when the Warrior Ring activates, it increases your attack stat by 10 points. What does that mean though? When you have the Warrior Ring buff, you will deal exactly 30 more damage on every hit when the buff is active. Which isn't actually a lot when you're in the late game and regularly hitting numbers close to 200. The Tub of Flowers is one of the few craftable items that has a different look depending on the season being blooming in spring and summer, and pretty much being an empty barrel in fall and winter. Here is every type of brassiere alongside the type of pathing that I think looks nice with it. Of course, further experimentation is always good. Also, you can put these inside of people's houses to spice things up a bit. Putting a wicked statue in the slime hutch prevents the witch from turning all of your slimes into black slimes. Don't let her delete your super rare tiger slimes. So you, like me, might have looked around to see if there's any situation where fairy dust is a profitable thing to make and use on. The only situation where the price of the product outweighs the price of making fairy dust is making radioactive bars. And even then, it only takes 9 hours to process normally. I prefer to keep fairy dust for getting long to produce crafting supplies quicker, like from tappers or from bee houses. Bug steak is one of the very few edible items that doesn't follow the energy to health ratio. While while most food has health be 45% of the gain of energy, for bug meat it's 65%. This quality is only shared by life elixirs and star drops, both of which are much more special than meat from a bug. The quality bobber is one of only two ways to get an iridium fish. The other is getting a perfect catch. 
so this is probably your best bet if you want to get an Iridium Legendary Fish. Also, fun fact, this item just straight up didn't work for the first month it was in the game. It literally did nothing. Stone chests look better than wood chests. Sorry, I don't make the rules, it's just so uniform in comparison. Look at that straight edge. Need a specific drop from a monster? Bad Luck Day, Burglar's Ring, Monster Musk, and Profit. This will maximize your chance of seeing as many enemies as possible while getting as many drops from them as possible. So many people just put one mini obelisk at the top of the farm and one at the very bottom just so they can get to Cinder Sap Forest a little quicker. Have you considered though, just carrying it in your pockets? Oh, I'm farming, tilling the ground, getting all my stuff ready for the season. Oh no, I forgot all of my seeds back at my house. Boom, boom. You're there. Go get all your stuff. Boom, boom. You're back. Cutting down all these trees. Oh my gosh, my inventory is so full of wood, I gotta get rid of it all. Boom, boom. Deposit. Boom. Back to it. Item ID bugs are the gift that keeps on giving. The modern table can be put into the bone mill since it shares an ID with the fossilized spine. Thanks, Blade. The damage dealt back with the Thorns Ring depends on the damage you take after all damage calculations, which means that having any defense buffs or good boots reduces the effectiveness of the ring. I'm gonna say it, the Glowstone Ring is the best ring in the game. It's unlocked early on and has two effects that are practically required for enjoying the game. And even though it is fairly easy to obtain, if you don't have it by the time the Stardew Valley Fair rolls around, you can check the shop to see if they have it there. As of right now, the farm computer will only show the stats of your main farm, regardless of if it's placed in Cinder Sap Forest, the desert, or even the Ginger Island farm. If you're watching this in the future of version 1.6, this will have been changed, and it'll now show you the stats of whatever area it's in. So this tip is tangentially related to Ostrich Incubator. When you get that one ostrich egg from digging up the spot on Ginger Island from the journal scrap, do not get rid of that egg. Only use it in the Ostrich Incubator. This way you can reliably get more ostrich eggs from the one that hatches. Otherwise, the only way you'll ever find one again is by getting lucky with a rare chest in the volcano. Heavy tappers reduce the amount of time it takes to get products from a tree by a fraction, not a flat number. So it's most useful on trees that take longer to produce, like the maple tree. It takes four days instead of nine normally. Also, if a heavy tapper gets hit by lightning, it is completely destroyed. So make sure you have a couple of lightning rods around so that doesn't happen. That's a very expensive item to lose. I've said it in like five other videos and I will say it again. You can essentially duplicate any item that you get from a geode at Clint's by opening up the same type of geode in a geode crusher immediately after that. Unfortunately, hoppers don't work like the ones in Minecraft, but here's still a few fun uses for it that I've done before. You can make a poor man's coffee machine by filling them with coffee beans and setting it up next to a keg. You can make the process of making bars easier if you have a ton of resources to use. You can just line them alongside areas you walk by a lot to just automatically work through that whole backlog of milk you got. There's a bunch of uses if you're looking for them. You may be tempted to put solar panels in the desert because it never rains there. It doesn't work. In fact, if I try to use fairy dust on it, it doesn't work, but it's kind of a cool effect. Finally, one last effect. Magic bait still has the 50% reduction of biting time of regular bait despite it not being the main purpose. Also, if you use it to fish right around this area, you can catch the fish from the submarine that's usually only available during the night market. Not gonna lie, I struggled coming up with uses for a few of the items, but in general I try to disagree with any item being completely useless. Despite crab pots being deemed as horrible by most people, I had a playthrough where I wasn't allowed to farm making most of my money from crab pots and I still made over 1 million gold in 100 days, so I consider myself a bit of a champion of the underrated items. Hopefully I was able to open your eyes to the potential of some of these items. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Good night.